Welcome, this short video is going to go through how to sketch a supply curve from a supply function. Uh, so typically you'll be given a supply function that looks something like this. Basically what you're going to want to do is sketch a graph. You'll have quantity and price. You want to figure out where the intercept is going to be. Uh, for this one, it's going to occur at the origin. So if p equals zero, we know that q will equal zero. Boom, boom, we're at the origin. Now we just have to figure out the slope. So if price increases by one, price equals one times five, quantity is gonna be five, do, 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 five. Price goes up to two, we would expect quantity to go up to 10. Two times five equals 10, do, do, do. And we end up with a supply curve that slopes up that looks like this. Uh, if we're so inclined, we could also create a supply table. A quantity of zero, price is going to have to be zero. At a price of one, we would expect quantity to be five, uh, so on and so forth. Oops, sorry, it's going to end up being 10, 3, 15, 4, 20, that sort of thing. Now, what may happen to be a little bit tricky is if they give you this negative 10 as the coefficient or the intercept. So what that is going to do is at a price of zero, you're actually going to have a negative 10 being supplied. And so what this does is it allows for the supply curve to require some price that is much greater than some infinitely small amount uh, greater than zero in order to start supplying. So this is much more realistic in the real world, right? Like typically if somebody offers you a penny or some tiny amount of money, you're not gonna be willing to produce it. So what you have to do here is start at negative 10. So if P is equal to zero, we supply a negative amount, which isn't possible, but it gives us the requirement that price has to be some value greater than zero. So what does that price end up having to be? Okay, so in order to get a quantity of zero, what does this price have to be? So two times what will give us 10? And so it's gonna be five. So what we see with this example where we have a negative 10 in the coefficient is that we need some positive price to exist in order for a quantity to be equal to zero. Then once we're at this point, we just follow the same process as before. If price is six, we plug it into our function. Six times two is 12. Quantity ends up being two. If price is seven, we get four. If price is eight, we get six, so on and so forth. So. Now we get two, four, six, six, seven, eight, and then our typical upward sloping supply curve. So there is your supply curve as a result of your supply function. Uh, the trick here to remember is to just plug those values in to the equations you have. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing the math, you can make the table like I did too, just to make sure that you're getting the math correct and then go through and create those graphs.